Welcome to the Anatomy of a Strategy podcast. Carlos Pacheco here as I record this intro while Tara is away. Just finished recording uh, our first interview uh, show of 2020, and it's a doozy. We welcomed Vicky Saunders. She is the multi award winning founder of SheEO. I've heard of SheEO for very long time as Tara has been an activator for many years. CEO is the worldwide ecosystem that supports finances and celebrates female innovators using activators as well as hosting summits, events, and much more. To name some of Vicky's accolades, on top of being named as one of 30 world-changing women in conscious business, she's also been listed as one of the 100th most influential leaders in of 2015. CEO is in a tear and expanding all over the world. They've recently expanded to a new brand region, the United Kingdom. We'll be talking a little bit about how she manages to scale and sustain this type of growth. That being said, let's get straight to it. So, Welcome, Vicky. We are so excited to have you in our studio. As our first guest of 2020. Woohoo! I'm yeah. excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And um, one of the reasons, well, let me just back up. Sure. <laughs> I have known you for quite a while now. Um, I think we didn't physically meet when we were both down in California years ago, but we knew each other online. Definitely. Like we digitally yeah. met. Um, and then we both happened to find ourselves in Toronto yeah. <laughs> years later. Um, and the little story uh, that I love to tell because I like to do the whole, I knew her when, <laughs> <laughs> was that uh, you were talking to women in uh, tech, in the startup world, and getting feedback early days when you're sort of testing the idea of CEO. Yeah. And... You and I met at the 416 snack bar on Bathurst. Right? What a memory. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah. Well, it's so funny because I don't always remember things, but I do yeah. remember that conversation. I remember you talking about this idea of starting this, like this basically this worldwide fund. Or at the time mm -hmm. you were just, you were thinking probably big in general, but you were testing just the idea where, where women would put in money. And not expect to get money back. back. So yeah. it's like I'm. It's it's not really an investment in that way, other than you're investing in the future, not in your own. Yeah, returns. getting a return. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the returns would go back into Shio, which would allow. Yeah, Shio to to grow and and continue to give to more women. And I think your goal at the time was two hundred. What was your original goal uh, when we started? Uh, well, the goal was always get a million women globally. And a billion dollar fund, which we would leave as a legacy, essentially, uh, to fund 10,000 entrepreneurs a year forever. That was the original idea. And then, um, you know, one of these things for those who don't know the sort of nuance between Canadians and Americans, which is changing a little bit these days, uh, is that, you know, when you have a big idea in Canada, people often say, why don't you start with a pilot? You know, like yeah. do it smaller. And so I was like, what if we got a million women to crowdfund a billion dollars overnight and they didn't want to return? Like imagine the headlines in newspapers, people's heads would blow off because uh, it was such a weird idea, right? To like, yeah. just give you're this as a gift and you're not getting a tax receipt too, which yeah. is like super what? Um, <laughs> and because uh, there was, anyway, it's the re regulatory issues around it. And then, you know, all my American friends are like, do it. This is awesome. And all my Canadian friends were like, mm, why don't you start a little small? You know, so I thought, what is a pilot of that? Uh, and so we thought we'd start with, you know, hundreds of women yeah. in one country and then sort of grow it from there uh, and test the model and see how it was working and whatever. What year was that? 2015. 2015. So yeah, you remember that. I remembered. The, yeah. I remember the drinks and the, yeah. <laughs> and the conversation. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So I like when I was sitting there, you were telling me about this. Mm -hmm. Having lived in the U.S., I love the idea. I'm, yeah. I think um, you know, very much like you, you're raised Canadian and a little bit more conservative. And then you go into the U.S. and you're like, wow, everything is possible here, which is really interesting to me. And then coming back to Canada, it's been, you know, a bit of an educate re-education. Um, and I think probably sometimes, I don't know if you find it, I feel like I'm a little much for... Canadian. I always, well, I mean, I think that's really changed in the last 10 years. I just, I mean, Toronto's 
awesome. Right. Uh, and I think Canada, there's the whole vibe in Canada is changing, which is really amazing. So I think the sort of cons- very conservative culture we had about 20 years ago is really shifting. There's so much more innovation, so much more uh, risk taking, which is cool. But yeah, in general, I mean, way back, everyone's like, are you American? Yeah. You know, you're just not quite like all of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Well, and, and here's the crazy part mm-hmm. for everybody that's listening is, well, you definitely blew the original pilot, mm-hmm. quote unquote, yeah. out, of the, out of the water, and yeah. now you're well on your way. How we far are. along the way are Oh, we're to- just, uh, I would say, still at the beginning. It's interesting. So we have about 5,000 activators. We just launched our fifth country. We funded 53 ventures. Uh, and we have 70 regions around the world in a waiting list uh-huh. to expand this model. So we are going to be global. It's happening. Uh, and I heard it's funny because a lot of people are like, oh, you're growing so fast. You know, you should just, you should like take your time. And I'm like, this feels so slow yeah. to me, yeah, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. kind of, it's interesting. And then I saw this amazing thing on uh, uh, online where someone said, the first 1% takes forever yeah. to get something going. And that's like getting to 10,000 activators. And then getting from 10,000 to fi- like 1% to 5% feels like you're about to sneeze. Yeah. <laughs> and then everything totally takes off. Right. So when you're trying to like really move whole new ideas that are very new that people haven't heard before, that's sort of the structures. That made me feel a little bit better because I've been thinking, when is like the hockey stick coming? Right. You know, I feel like we're drip, 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 drip. Despite the fact that I hear all the time people are talking about this, like, yeah, what's yeah, it going to yeah, take? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it is a sufficiently different idea. Almost everything we do is so different than what the world currently does around yeah. this. Zero mm-hmm. percent interest loan. You don't, you know, you get a tax receipt in the U.S., but nowhere else in the world. Um, everybody's contributing and supporting each other in the spirit of radical generosity instead of trying to win mm-hmm. over yeah. each other. Like, just a bunch of things are different than the kind of current mindset. Yeah. And so there's... Yeah, you you flipped everything. You you yeah. you took everything that we knew about investing and you were like well, not that you did the opposite, but that you just rethought it all. Like mm-hmm. I don't think there's a single piece of what you've built with CEO that looks anything like you know, uh what are those other traditional incubator yeah yeah exactly fund. yeah um so can you describe a little sure. bit your yeah. the how <laughs> ceo works beyond just the money yeah sure and maybe just a bit of the sort of beginning of this idea which i've been a female entrepreneur forever i've been an entrepreneur forever and um uh, my friend Joy Anderson from Criterion, who's amazing, sort of leader in the gender lens investing space, says, you must have seen every single bug in the system mm-hmm. and just redesigned. I said, exactly. Yeah. That's literally it. I had such a long list of things. Uh, and so I we had the first, uh, I had a company called The Energy Group, which went public. And it was the first incubator and accelerator in Canada in 1999. Wow. So like way back in the day, yeah. mm-hmm. I was, I've been obsessed with this forever. How do you create the conditions for people to innovate and to thrive and to come up with new ideas? And, you know, I, I, was, I lived in Europe. I lived in Silicon Valley. I've been in Canada. And as an entrepreneur, I notice uh, that the different conditions really impact who I am as an entrepreneur, how I think. Mm-hmm. And so, oh, so. Uh, well, so, I mean, I was in Prague right after the wall fell down. Oh, wow. And so that's where I became an entrepreneur. I don't think I ever would have become an entrepreneur if I stayed in Canada. So one of the things was that uh-huh. every single person was in the street dreaming about what they were going to do now that yeah. they were free. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm free, too. What am I going to do? Yeah, right. Awesome. And so that's where I yeah. and when I came back to Canada, I was I was infused with this, like everybody going out and doing what they wanted to do with their lives because they were newly free to a place where you're supposed to be free already, but you don't really feel it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so how much harder it was to be an innovator in that space when everyone's like, oh, you can't do that. That's not the way it happens. Dot, dot, dot. And then I went to Silicon Valley where it was just like twice as fast, twice yeah, as yeah. much money, you know. It's like you haven't limit. founded 10 companies. Yeah. You're, what are you doing? You're a, yeah, you're lazy. <laughs> so like with all of that in mind and then also just recognizing like I've always it's not the gender thing is something I avoided for a very, very, very long time. I literally did, never want to do anything gender focused because uh, I grew up in a family full of boys and I saw what happened when I pointed out how I was treated differently. Mm-hmm. Everyone denied that that was true. <laughs> yeah. Right. So being a woman in the world is a bit of a traumatic experience experience, I would say. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, almost everything is not designed for us. So so I thought, what if you stepped back? And this is the hard part of everything that we're doing now in the world. We have things designed in a certain way, and we think that's the only way they can happen. Mm-hmm. And the big challenge for everyone out there is to rethink our systems and our structures and and question yourself on everything. Is that really how it has to be? Well, what if it doesn't make sense? Then maybe there's another way. 
And so with CEO, like we literally went in the opposite of direction. So there's this mantra now of go big or go home. You need venture capital to scale. It's the only kind of capital that helps you scale. Right. And uh, what if that's not true? Mm -hmm. So 99% of the Canadian economy is small and medium-sized business. Mm -hmm. 90% of the U.S. economy is small and medium-sized business. Mm -hmm. Less than 0.1% of ventures need venture capital. But that's all we talk about. Yeah. Yeah. So all of a sudden, I find these companies coming to me who, I mean, have this little product or something. They're like, oh, I need to raise venture capital. I'm like, Why? no, you need a customer. Like, Mm -hmm. but we've just, the narrative has swung so far into this VC world and like, that's the only way and go big or go home and win the whole market. And the, that whole religion, I would say that we have around going big has ruined the planet from my perspective, right? Five people have the same wealth as half the planet. So imagine that that is broken and see you later. So then what do you do? So for me, it was, how do you redesign for the kinds of businesses that we have and then you look at the conditions of our world right now. And so at CEO, we only fund women who are working on what we call the world's to-do list. So mm-hmm. they're uh, tracking towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. They have strong social impact. I think we are at a moment in time. I thought this five years ago, but now mm-hmm. it's people can yeah, actually listen cool. to me say this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and get it. <laughs> I think it's insane that we spend a penny on anything that isn't creating a better world. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've heard of this crazy pizza truck delivery thing, Zoom, Z-U-M-E, in the U.S. They raised $750 million, and their big innovation is you, food trucks can't cook when they're moving because of local regulations, so they put robots inside, and you dial, and they start making the pizza, send it to the AI robot who starts making the pizza on the way to your house so it's hotter and gets there fresher and faster. Oh, there's a problem and I'm thinking, that didn't And you know solving? who funded that? Vision Fund, who right. did We Work and everything else. Right. And you're just like, that's really where we need to put our money. Are you serious? Yeah. So, I mean, I just live in an opposite land to all that stuff. I just, every morning when I see all the VC deals coming into my email, I'm like, oh. Yeah, um, yeah you just yeah. almost want to, and I and I have to say, just not to yeah. just interrupt you, um, because this is a wonderful story, but what, years ago when I was doing my startup, um, Biosphere, I, I was inundated with that stuff all the time, and it made yeah. you feel like this big, so like little, little, yeah. and it made you feel like you were failing on absolutely m- many levels. And then I got out of that, and I just shut out all of that stuff. In fact, like I, I could that your social stories are great, <laughs> yeah. And I left, I, like I, I left women's groups that were in the startup world that I, I still miss a lot of the conversations they were having because I couldn't deal with that news. I stopped looking at TechCrunch. I stopped looking at Mashable. I stopped looking at everything that I was obsessively looking yeah. and the world completely changed totally for me. And like, I started looking at things in a different way and yeah, like I, the anxiety level went way down too. Yeah. Well, and I, it's also really hard to win at that game as a woman. Like they're oh. just, it, so I have a friend who's made 45 angel investments in the U S and every single woman founder to women founders, cause she's an activist investor in the space. Every single woman founder has been taken out at or before series A. Because as soon as something starts to scale, they're like, you don't look like the person who's going to scale this. Or there's something not quite right about you. Or And it happened to me. When we wow. went public, I got ditched. Right. right? They're like, you're just, there's something we need about somebody you that just not. Lead to well, the next in level. other words, I didn't look like them. Mm-hmm. That's the, That was a part of it. And I've learned a lot. I mean, since then, there's a million reasons. That's a whole other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so this idea of what kind of capital do these ventures need that are working on the world's to-do list? And I also knew that whatever we were designing, because we have this crowdfunded approach to it, so hundreds of women per country contribute $1,100 each. Uh, In Canada, or in the U.S., you get a tax receipt for that. That money is pooled together in a fund. And then we loan it out at 0% interest to female founders, which is a very good rate. Yeah. Uh, 0%. Um, Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. And so the money is one thing, right? And they pay this money back over five years into the fund, and then we loan it out again. So the capital is kept in flow instead of one person making a ton of money off someone who had a great idea and holding on to it. Um, But the big thing that's so different about CEO is the ecosystem that we build around this. So with the hundreds of women who contribute capital, they're the ones who decide who gets funded. Hmm. It's totally democratic. There is no investment committee of four experts who know everything because no one knows everything. Right. And we don't know how to pick winners. We can just look at where money goes. So this is trusting the intuition of hundreds of women to decide which ventures they're they're excited about. And it doesn't mean these are the best ventures. It means that the 500 women or the 600 women who are voting this year care most about these companies right. and want to help them. And the reason we did this is because we thought if 
those women who are voting pick these companies, they're more likely to help them. Right. Right. Versus four experts say this is the thing, but then Mm -hmm. no one cares about helping them because they don't feel like they can. Right. So we we all of a sudden access the hundreds of people's networks and expertise Mm -hmm. and their buying power. And so that powerful community is now an asset and available to you. Like just imagine a biosphere if you had had 5,500 women right now around the world wanting to help you. What do you need? And the thing we is, we never crazy. got to 5,500 yeah. users, right? Right, but, like, and it's that would like, even so in itself. I often say to entrepreneurs because it is really opposite land to what they're using. They're living in a world where they're poked at and told, "You're not this. You're not enough. This. You're not growing fast enough. You're not doing it right." Blah blah, like a million things. Um, and all of a sudden, all these people vote for you, mm. and they paid to help you. Yeah, yeah. it's just like. What? I it know. takes a while to get it and to believe like you're going from this place of scarcity and hardship and trauma, basically, to all of a sudden having 500 people or 5,000 people who have your back. Yeah, yeah. And just the mindset shift in that alone and the emboldening that creates helps you accelerate your business. And then on top of that, you get a 0% interest loan and then you get coaches and then you get whatever you need, usually within 24 hours of your ask. Ethical manufacturer in China, this, that, like whatever it is you're asking and you're getting support because – someone in that network of thousands of people are listening. Yeah. And so it's, I, you know, to, we call this whole thing radical generosity Mm -hmm. uh, because it's the spirit underneath uh, this whole piece, which is kind of what I have learned in my 50 plus years of being on this planet is that I think people reach their potential and um, can be more of the greatness that's inside them when they're surrounded by people who lift them up as opposed to tell them everything that's wrong with them. Yeah, yeah. So we have to create a different spirit around what does it mean to be in business and community together? Which in uh, my experience with the system that you left yeah. behind um, was that everything was about what you're doing wrong mm-hmm. and you're not enough this or like – Absolutely. And We're all was, very good at that. I mean, yeah. you know, when I am meeting people, I'm like, what are you, what are you a master at? Yeah. There's always a pause. No one goes zing right into that. Yeah. Very rarely. But I'm like, what are you not good at? Oh, I can tell you that. I got lots of ideas, you know? Yeah, Everyone's yeah. told me that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I felt like that too. You know, we, I would be negotiating around the uniqueness of our company and they're like, that's intangible. It doesn't fit on the balance sheet. Right. Like all the wet, squishy, important, human, amazing things about mm. us don't fit in our measurement and therefore we think they're not valuable but that's all made up too absolutely so it's crazy yeah. speaking of those yeah. the squishy part yeah. i mean i'm sure that anybody listening to this right now is kind of just like so uh inspired um in fact i feel a little verklempt <laughs> myself just like listening yeah. to you talk about this do you ever just stand back look at how far you've gone and be and like like your take your breath, you take your breath away. Yeah, I mean, I so one of the things that I have learned to do because uh, I am just always pushing myself to the next thing. Is as soon as I hit anything, I'm like next. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you can relate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but this practice of gratitude is a thing that I do all the time now, which I never used to do before, and I learned this through the concept of radical generosity. Like uh, one of the things that MJ, she's one of the coaches of our ventures, has taught us is that. Um, gratitude and generosity are the in-breath and the out-breath. And so you need that full cycle. It's like asking and giving, Mm -hmm. giving and receiving. And um, so I, yeah, I mean, when I step back, I'm like, it's amazing, first of all, that anyone followed this idea. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And it's it's beautiful to see people stepping forward and to be getting emails. And uh, yeah, that part of it feels really amazing. And uh, anything to create a different experience for entrepreneurs who step out of their comfort zone Mm -hmm. to try and solve something to make the world a better place to me is the highest and best use of Vicky Zonders. And (laughs) thankfully there's lots of other people coming along with that. Cause I, I had a, you know, it took me a long time to build my confidence and believe that what I was doing mattered because it was so opposite to what people are like, why don't you just make money then give it away? Yeah. Why are you trying to create a business that's doing good from the beginning, which is what I did 30 years ago. And there wasn't a word for it yet. Uh, And so uh, not being surrounded by your peeps and the yeah. others is hard. Yeah. And so, you know, creating this kind of a global network where you can step into it, where people have your back from the beginning, that hopefully will transition how we get in relationship with each other. Yeah. I really I so. got like, it's just, I'm, I got the, I got the goosebumps when I hear you talk and I feel like 
It, I hope that the right people, I hope that there's like VCs and angels and people in the hustle bro world <laughs> that are listening here mm-hmm. and going, hmm, actually, yeah. I can see, even if they just inject a bit of that, right? Like um, the uh, support network. Yeah. One of the things that like I missed out on um, for a couple of years was she. So, uh, so just as a disclosure, I am a CEO activator um, and proud to be one. I was not able to do it the first year because I think I was still pretty broke. Yeah. Um, I, but I did get to be part. You let me be part of the network so that I could like give my skills, yeah. which was very generous as well um, and lovely. Um, but then I think year two onwards, mm-hmm. I've been an activator. And one of the things I think it happened organically, maybe I'm wrong, were these voting parties emerged, yeah. Yeah. which I heard about the voting parties, I think in like year three starting yeah, to emerge. Yeah, they just started to happen then. Yeah. And I was like, that's really interesting. So much stuff was going on in my life. There was like the timing was wrong, but I finally got to go to a voting party just recently. And I have to say, like, the amount of energy that I got from just being there in that space mm-hmm. with other women who believe in radical generosity is like um, it, it, it energized everything that I'm doing today here mm-hmm. at Truly. Oh, thank you. So as somebody who witnessed her energy. Yeah, coming home, tell me, like, tell me. No, no, no. But I, my, my comment here is, can you explain what is a voting party? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. As Vicky explained earlier, um, and I'll and you could probably explain it best uh, anyway. But uh, that every single activator is given a login, and all of sort of like the rundown of each of the um, the various applicants and votes. Yeah. It's a really simple process. So uh, our application process is not your typical like pitch deck full of jargon. Don't know what they're talking about. (laughs) It's 10 questions, plain English. (laughs) How do you make money? Who are you? What's the vision? Dot, dot, dot. How are you creating a better world? And so they're very easy to read. And we have activators who are uh, ranging in age currently from 19 or so 14 to 95. Wow. wow. So we have 14 year olds who sit down in the, and it's, it's like the coolest business class ever because yeah, you're yeah. reading through all these applications and going, Oh, I had no idea you could do something like this. Right. Yeah. Everyone's creating a better world with their business. My nieces were like so blown away when they started. So then mothers and daughters and grandmothers are all doing this now. So which is yes. kind of fun. Uh, but you, you read through and you vote and, and the voting parties happen. Yeah. Cause people are like, this is my, this is the most fun part of this whole experience. Right. How do we do this? Well, and so for me, like you look at it and you're like, okay, you can vote online. So mm-hmm. a lot of us, especially like uh, activators busy. are busy women. Yeah, totally. Like half the women in that room were like high powered lawyers, yeah. like trying to make partner, you know, like that sort of thing. And so they're busy. They have yeah. long hours. The, the, a lot of them have kids. It's very hard to find time in the day. And so, yeah, it makes sense. You can vote within a period online. Oh, here's a, I have a, I have a couple of hours. I'm going to do it now. But instead, they said, I don't want to do this alone. Yeah. I want to do this like amongst my uh, fellow activators. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you know the story of the first one. Like, did somebody say, "Hey, does do people?" Someone just vote? said, "Let's do this together." And I remember thinking, "Oh, is that a like is that a good thing?" Because will people then influence right. how each other votes? Um, but then we're like, well, let's try it. I mean, obviously, yeah. it's all, we're not stopping you from doing it. And the organic, the thing that started to happen is the transformative nature of recognizing that not everybody thinks like you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, what? You're voting for her? How come? Yeah. And then they'd share and someone go, oh, that's really interesting. I never thought of it that way. And it turns out to be this really very uh, interesting way of getting different perspectives uh, around it, which we do anyway, because when you have 500 people voting, you literally, it's like, who knows what's going to happen. I, yeah. Every year I close my eyes and cross my fingers and go, hope it works again. You know? <laughs> uh, but what we've really learned is that um, when hundreds of women decide that something matters to them and they want to get behind it, that changes everything for that yeah. business. Even if that business didn't look like it, I mean, it has, you know, the average company has 27 days of cash flow. Right. So when we do the vetting of these at first and have banks, we have a bank partner that looks through them and it comes back with flags. It's always like flag, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, which is why banks don't usually, you know, yeah. uh, loan to startups because it's like so precarious and crazy. But getting all those. But then when you become customers and st- and supporting those ventures, almost anything's possible. So shifting around your process of how you fund companies can dramatically change the outcomes. Yeah. And if I could leave people listening with 
one thing. It is that the way we do things is not the only way oh, to hmm. do things. And our our impact is off the charts. Our ventures are growing really quickly. They're creating jobs. They're growing revenue. They're exporting uh, largely because of the efficiencies of this e- ecosystem we've created. So. Yeah, yeah, this is all amazing. Yeah. The big question, though, um, yeah. and I think because uh, this is anatomy of a strategy and a lot of people listening are very interested in um, building awareness around yes, things. totally. Um, you started pretty much, I mean, you had some um, people working with you early on, but not, you know, you started pretty much on your own. Yeah, this it was is like more a volunteer team of 1.5. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, how, how did you... How have you gotten to, what, over 5,000 yeah. and multiple continents and yeah. in multiple regions? Like, how how have yeah. you gotten there? What did you do? Uh, so what, my one uh, leadership uh, strategy is follow the energy. This is what I do. I follow the energy. And so if... Uh, if so, if you put so with the idea of CEO, I would I was doing some speaking at the time before we started, and I'd be like, I have this crazy idea. Mm-hmm. Imagine if a million women crowdfunded a billion dollars and da da da. Uh, and I waited to see if anyone would respond. Anyone think that's a good idea? <laughs> and after a while, it started to grow. And people were like, are you going to do that thing? And I get an email a couple of weeks later, like, I think you should do this. This sounds really interesting. Until one time I did this at an event in Montreal and a woman came running up to me after with her checkbook and said, I'm writing the first check right now. Amazing. And it was that waiting for it to be ready. Uh, and then I thought, okay. And then I was like, how are we going to fund this? Like, you know, whatever. And a bank came along and covered all of our admin for the first year. So I was like, oh. followed the energy of that sign and go. And so since then, that's how this whole thing has grown is we do not, this is so important. Uh, don't try and convince anyone who doesn't get it mm. to be part of it. Walk away quickly. You know, if they're asking more than five questions, goodbye. See you in five years when you see this and you'll be like, okay, great. Mm-hmm. But if you're not an early adopter, we do not, we didn't spend time on you. Don't waste and that was one of the hardest parts of this because so many women who halfway through the sentence would be like, oh my God, count me in. All my friends are going to do this. Right. And then they'd call me back a week later. What's wrong with my friends? <laughs> and they were shocked. And then, it, and then it was actually really hard too, from a comms perspective, because I'm like, "Don't throw away your friend. It's okay. <laughs> okay. It's okay. Not there. everyone is that." And then everyone's like, "But why? Why aren't people doing this? It seems so obvious to me." And so this larger sort of transformative understanding of like, not everyone's like you. Not everyone's an early adopter. People are kind of blind to that themselves in many ways. So it was to convince, to convince, yeah, to like stop people from trying to convince yeah. was a big part of our comms. And just go with the ease because it can be as easy as just starting a sentence or it can be a super painful hundred questions at a dinner party. Right. And you don't want to be part of that because it sucks the energy out of you. Yeah. So that that was a big thing. And then that, that's how we got to other countries. Mm. People who would not stop emailing. And this wow. is one woman from New Zealand. I'm like, is New Zealand? I said to the team, we're not launching in don't, New Zealand. Don't worry. I mean, I know we're in North America. That's so far. You can't get farther away. And I got on a plane. She's like, here are two business class tickets. Come. I really, wow. I just want you to tell your story. And as soon as I was done on stage, she's like, how many people want this right now? And, you know, 250 women put up their hand and I went, uh-oh. And I called the team. I'm like, I think we just launched in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, no. It was unstoppable energy. And you can't buy that. No. Right? You can't buy those ads to make that happen. No. You follow that. And, and so that's always a, a thing that we're working on is if you're trying to you know, you've got a strategy for something that's not working, then I'm not all oh, it's divine timing. It's not the timing right now. Yeah, Let yeah. it go. Even though you want it so much, is it really worth pushing all that water uphill? Right. So I try and really pay attention to what feels like the time is now and what is right, probably, but just not right now. God, it's hard, right? Brilliant. It's it's brilliant and it's exactly like it's you know, we talk about it in the terms of like understanding your audience. Like yes. who and we we keep coming back to clients and potential clients and saying who is your best customer? Right. Right. You're not not like, oh, everybody would benefit from this, but who is your best customer? And your best customer, you know, the way that we define it is, you know, number one has a need or desire for your product, even if they don't know it yet. But like as yes. soon as you get it in front of them, they go, where has this been all my life? Exactly. Right? That's the big one. Number two is is will can and is willing to pay for your right. product, right? So it's it's good for you probably to get in front of um, young women maybe who are just starting their careers, but they might not have the capital yet. Their energy is great, but they're not necessarily like where you're going to want to spend 
all your time probably pitching because they don't have the money to activate with. Then now they'd be applying, of course, as uh, uh, entrepreneurs, and that's a different yeah. side. But but yeah, getting in front of people that are you know can and are willing to put that money in, and and you know number three, and I think this is what you've tapped into so beautifully is talk with other people like them. Yes. This is the community part. You find and, your find the others. Mm-hmm. And so tell me with the with the uh, with the New Zealand part was that you know how did they hear about you? Social media, mm-hmm. honestly. Right. It was just uh, actually I spoke at a conference in San Francisco. Okay. And uh, this woman happened to be there from New Zealand. I didn't even know who she was. I didn't I had never I didn't even really look her up before I went to New Zealand. This is very Vicky Saunders. Just jump on and say yes. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm going to take a plane like, to come meet oh, you. She's actually like a really big deal and everybody knows this woman and she was the only CEO on the stock exchange running a company. It was the biggest company in New Zealand. And then she was the co-founder of the fastest growing startup in the country's history. I'm like, okay, this person met. And so yeah, if yeah. she wants to get a message out, she's on the front page of the paper the next day. Yeah. So she basically activated the country herself. It's small. It was It was amazing. But yeah, so that part was interesting. But I do want to just go back to a thing that you said earlier around, uh, you know, again, a follow the energy thing was we had so many young women who resonated with this a lot more than even like my vintage of women are kind of used to like you get something in return for this. We're very like baked into it, whereas a lot of uh, the young ones, thank God, uh, want to create a different kind of vibe. And uh, so we started to do this monthly. So it's ninety two dollars a month to be an activator to get in the community. And so now our fastest growing demographic are young ones just getting started. And some people, uh, there's just a thing about being uh, in the integrity of everything in your life, wanting to support the kind of world you want. And so we have, I mean, I remember crying the first time this 24 year old reached out and said, I'm going to be an activator. I just got a new job. I'm going to save up. And then I'm going to do it as soon as I can. And three months later, she said, I just activated and I saved money from my first three paychecks. Wow. And now I'm in and I thought, oh my God. Because I literally go to dinner parties with people who are worth ten to forty million dollars who ask me a hundred questions and still don't activate. Right. Wow. And the, and I thought, wow, look at the distinction between those two. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing that's happened with CEO again at Follow the Energy kind of thing is entrepreneurs who don't. We have a criteria that you have to have at least fifty k in revenue to become an to to apply between fifty k and two million. And lots of people don't yet have fifty k. And so we had lots of feedback around that. So we started to give. Um, Uh, we started to think about what we could do. And this one entrepreneur said, wait a minute, this is a network full of people who want to help. Not just the entrepreneurs we're supporting, but each other. Why don't I become an activator to grow my business, to get to 50K? And then I can apply as a venture. That first thing changed so much. So now lots of entrepreneurs who want to build their businesses come into CEO as activators first and then they're applying. So we've had a few of those and then get, they get selected as an entrepreneur because they've built relationships in the network. So we're learning lots that it's not just, you know, this original idea of if you have money and you have money to give away, uh, that means activating. Mm-hmm. Now it's super different. It's literally like if you're committed to supporting each other to lift all boats, join in. Yeah, yeah. So I have a question because I'm the man in the room yeah. here. Like. Are men activators? Uh... So we would be very happy to accept your money. <laughs> <laughs> and if you put it in the name of a woman that you're mentoring or a daughter or a sister mm-hmm. um, or your partner, uh, that's one of the ways because we we still want to have women selecting the ventures because we think that's really important. Okay. But yeah, okay. my brother was the first one to hack that. Nice. He, <laughs> he uh, got both of his daughters in and it's just been a game changer for all of us. Yeah, that's Good great. Idea. Yeah, and I, and actually, that is a really interesting lesson too. Um, that y- you know, you didn't go, you didn't say, okay, well, I'm just going to open it to anyone, because that would have probably changed a lot of the energy too. I would imagine. Uh, yeah, that was that was a hard thing to to deal with as we went through because you know most of us live in scarcity mm-hmm. and don't think there are enough people. And in our first year, our goal was a thousand activators, and we didn't reach a thousand. And so as soon as it was looking like we weren't going to hit a goal and you have a lot of A-type people in an environment, what do they want to (laughs) do? Do whatever you can to hit the goal. And so I remember at our first summit, uh, you know, someone stood up and said, why don't we accept money from men? Because then we'd hit our number. And I'm like, is that really what the lesson needs to be here? Right. I mean, I think for me, it will be an unbelievable party and an amazing shift when we announce that we have raised a billion dollars of women supporting one another like that 
that knowing that we can do that together uh, sort of pulls us out. I mean, most women that I know are not that engaged with their capital. Don't really want to talk about it too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you know, over to the advisor. We don't really invest it as much. We're just not that active with it. And we, many of us, uh, really have money for the first time and control of it that other generations haven't. So it's still new. Mm-hmm. Um, spending it how you want to create the kind of world you want. And I, one of the things that I'm starting to see unlock for people is that how we spend our money every day creates this economy. Absolutely. If we don't like this economy, we're in charge of it. Women make 80% of purchasing decisions. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So the yogurt you buy, the hummus you're buying, the whatever you're doing with your money, the car, like you're supporting that culture and those companies. Mm-hmm. We are. T- we could literally flip the economy if we wanted to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the question is, how do you scale up businesses that are doing good so that we can support that economy, not the one that we have right now? Yeah. Well, one of I know that one of your activators, she has like um, an app that celebrates – uh, women that, you know, like you can download the app. I'm trying to remember what the yeah. name is. So Amy Cross. Yeah, Amy Cross, yeah. 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 Well, I know her name, yeah. but what's the app again? Oh, oh you're not allowed to I'm, say it. Okay. Co- no, no, it's oh, yeah. not that. It's going to come into my oh, brain. Yeah, yeah. I'm just literally Anyways, so sorry, Amy, uh, if you're yeah. listening. <laughs> Amy, sorry. Yeah, we will make sure coming. that we put it in there. Um, but yeah, so the app allows you to go and and if you're looking for a product you can you can check how female positive it is like board members yeah uh, how they treat women how they treat women and, yeah. yeah in general so yeah. like that's a really great start and then she's trying to create an index around it and i think that's like huge huge, that's huge under huge the, and she's challenge. been kind of doing that she's awesome yeah i mean uh, gender fair gender fair yeah. yeah thank you and she's been trying to she's we'll been working make sure to put it in the show notes yeah <laughs> Uh, sorry, Amy. Uh, yeah, gender fair and like yeah, she's been working on this, and they're working on very much like when you say something is uh, certified organic right. or um, you know, have a little thing. So go to a LCBO here yeah. in our wine store anywhere you are at, and yeah. you're like, what wine should I choose? If you can see the gender fair logo on the wine, you know, mm-hmm. I would love to know which wineries were. Uh, women founded, women owned, totally. Women, women run. So, yeah, that sort of stuff is, uh, yeah, that sort of stuff. I think is coming down the pipe. Absolutely. Too. Yeah. I mean, we. So we are. We've supported about two thousand ventures from around the world who have applied. Everyone who applies gets feedback mm-hmm. uh, on their application from us, and then we've funded, as I mentioned, fifty three so far. More to come in March. Um, so we're about to hit our fifth year in Canada and having a global summit. And you know, one of the things that's been kind of fun about all of this is. We are going to unveil the global marketplace of CEO ventures uh, at this event and to start to see like what it will look like to walk into a room full of women working on the world's to-do list and hear the products and services that we can start to buy and what that starts to invoke in all of us um, to find the others so that we can really create change is exciting. And, um, you know, I, maybe to go back to the anatomy of strategy for a thing, because I, I think this is uh, interesting as well as not only following the energy to other countries, but we don't pay anyone in any other country to run this model. Mm. It is all volunteer driven, which is impossible, everyone says. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as soon as we get things started, people are like, you, no, we really need to hire someone. I'm like, no, we're really not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this, We just have a platform that allows people locally, if you want to aggregate local capital, to fund a certain set of criteria and then use your resources to help grow those things and then connect them to global markets. That's what we have a platform for. And uh, it could be used for anything. She is the first customer of this kind of new funding ecosystem based approach, but it could be used in many different ways, which is something that we're kind of playing with. Um, But again, it's this participatory self-organizing systems, network effect, all these new ways of organizing uh, and structuring things. I think there are so many ways to create change in a much faster pace than this hierarchical top down push out by Facebook ads mm. world, yes. right? Mm. There's there's all kinds, like people are dying to make a difference mm. yeah. and to be part of something. Yeah. And we have this weird thing about like, oh, if I'm asking someone for something, they have to get something out of it. I'm like, yeah, what they're getting out of it is feeling like they're making a meaningful impact. Mm-hmm. That is just the most desirable customer experience you have where people are like, I have to be part of this. It really matters. Mm. And so I think shifting your mindset when you're marketing around that, that you're unlocking all of this desire in people. And so that's why I believe that every venture that is creating a better world has such a massive advantage over everyone yeah. else. Like the same old thing that gives something away, BOGO stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think most of that stuff is kind of crappy personally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because it's just it's like this bolt on social impact kind of thing afterwards not built in to the vibe and the essence of what you're doing in the world yeah i think that's the thing that people have to find yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, that uh, like makes me also think about like when you talk about like taking the hierarchies out of that, that's another way you've really just thrown the old model out. Like I think I asked like, can I put in more money? Yeah. And you guys were like, yeah, sure. And then you'll be paying ahead. Yeah. Well, but I can't put in. You can sponsor somebody like we yeah. have gifted activation spots, which some people do, which is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. that's a great idea. But yeah. I was just like, oh, um, so I can't be like a $5,000 a year activator. Yeah. And you're like, no, everybody puts in a thousand dollars. And that must also very much like not accepting that makes a lot of people crazy. It's yeah. like, <laughs> and there's other they're ways. Like, what do you mean? You know, so, cause there are people that have a lot of capital. Yeah. They're like, oh, I can do more. And yeah. And it's, uh, it's, cause that creates a hierarchy. It creates a hierarchy. And we, uh, I said this very thing at the beginning, which people were like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, we are not here to serve you. Mm. Mm. Oh my God. Like every philanthropic org on the planet's like, what the hell? Like that's the opposite of you're here. Of course you're here to serve me. I'm like, no, we're not. You're paying us a hundred dollars. It's an eleven hundred dollar contribution. A thousand dollars goes into the fund. You're paying us a hundred bucks. We are here in service of the whole and everybody stepping in. That's a really different thing. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, uh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was if I'm like, okay, I'm gonna say this. And but when I say it from the fact of like uh, I'm using my leadership to do this and do you really think that do you want me to be like calling you and giving you one-on-one -on -one check ins on these like do you really think that that's a good use of my time no yeah. and eventually people go oh yeah you're right okay but we're just used to it yeah, we're okay. used to being served and so yeah the hierarchy of that it's like oh there's a ten thousand dollar level and whatever yeah, did you get it a takes special away, badge like that's that, takes away the yeah. whole democratic kind of thing exactly. about it i mean we're working on that now because we're about to hit five years there have been people that have been in for five years which is awesome mm -hmm. yeah so branding i need some branding help on that anyone out there <laughs> yeah, yeah, um yeah. <laughs> trying to figure that out but also you know i just this whole everybody can contribute it to the degree that they can contribute and not you know just because you happen to have more capital are you more special yeah you know so yeah and i think that that is the part of it that i liked was i remember somebody like because there's there was like a distinction about you know superconductor or super, super activator super yeah. activator yeah. or whatever and i was like oh i want to be a super activator does that mean i just give more money and i get yeah. super and it was like it had nothing to do with yeah it's that. more about an organizer yeah you know, exactly. you're one of the super <laughs> it's it's like, like oh it's like your... time oh that's yeah. a hard part yeah, 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 truly exactly. <laughs> or a builder you know there there are people some people who have networks and are just like natural sales people and go get their others there are so many women in our network who do not want to ask their friends for money mm -hmm. so they look at it from that perspective and so that's the thing we have to shift to which is really it's it's more about creating the kind of world we want and yeah. it's there's once it's hard to explain the experience until you're kind of in it yeah i mean you've seen that right you go to and then you're like oh wow yeah. i voted for her look at her growing her business like some of the businesses yeah. are just phenomenally uh, a bigos created breathable food wrap you wrap an avocado, it stays green for four days. Like what? Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, instead of plastic wrap, which kills everything and it dies immediately. As uh, someone who's invented uh, a mobility bike uh, for people that are um, that can still move their legs but yeah. need stability, so it's you walk with this bike and a it's linker, just taken off the alinker. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. alinker. Uh, so, uh, this woman from New Zealand who just invented um, compostable courier packaging. Huh. So that's all important. of your Amazon, everything, <gasps> like what? God. Land Philly hell. Uh, and so that's just taken off like crazy. And I, just a quick fun story on this. We were, we did a webinar with her and she lives like in the middle of nowhere in New Zealand. So, you know, like not on everyone's radar every day. Uh, although New Zealand's on everyone's radar these days, yes, isn't it? It's like yeah. desirable place to be. And uh, one of our activators in Canada watched the webinar and then was at home talking to her husband. Said, this is amazing. And he's like, oh, we're, we've been looking for something like that. And she happened to be the wife of the CTO of Shopify. Oh, so she amazing. reaches out and says, hey, do you want to talk to my husband? And they're like, what? Oh, my God. Yes. Sure. Hello. And so starts a conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the network effect possibility yeah. mm -hmm. that starts to happen when, you know, those who have influence and networks and expertise are in relationship with those in need. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of our economy is people with money in relationship with people who have money. Yeah. Right. And so we we are hopefully creating uh, more opportunity for people who have something to contribute to get it to the people in need. Yeah. And that need, by the way, has a huge impact on us because if they get their ideas out there, we have a better world. Yeah. So. Yeah, I um, 
Well, every time I go to the grocery store, I feel very proud that I was in the class that voted for Smart Sweets. Oh, yeah. That, you know, the, yeah. the uh, gummies, yeah, gummies that are gummies like that are, uh, no low sugar, sugar no yeah. sugar or whatever for kids yeah. or whatever. Um, and yeah, as Carlos knows, I buy a lot. She's of grown that. Them. Yeah. She's done so well with that, like just feeling like, oh, that's part of the network. Yeah, and absolutely. Stuff. So it's actually like to see the businesses and how like of your of the businesses. I know a linker has done well. Smart Suite. There's there's a lot of them that have actually done quite well. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's uh, we've uh, raised a sort of. I think around $20 million in follow-on funding so far from our so activator amazing. network in these ventures who are growing quickly. Um, you know, Lollyware is edible seaweed-based straws mm. and now pl- bioplastics to remove all plas- you know, single-use plastics. Uh, there's just an unbelievable range uh, of businesses in Canada, the U.S., New Zealand, Australia, and soon to be U.K. So uh, a lot of them are doing very, very well. And we're about to launch a follow-on fund uh, so that for activators who would like to get a return – who have selected these companies are in a relationship with them and excited about them that they can invest for a return oh, going forward, wonderful. which is cool. So, uh, yeah, the beginning. Yeah. Here we go. Well, and that definitely is that, that you know, that leads to sort of my one of my final questions is like in, we've talked to some amazing women on this podcast, like Nilla for Merchant mm-hmm. and Cindy Gallup and Erica M even yeah. um, uh, that that have like said – Investing in women is a really great strategy. Yep. And you are proving that. Mm-hmm. We are. Model. And and do you, and, uh, you know, how do you think investing in women is? Like, why do you think? Why? Yeah. yeah. So 51% of the population <laughs> who have amazing ideas and lots of fresh perspectives uh, can't get their innovations funded. 4% of venture capital goes to women. Four percent of bank loans in the U.S. goes to women. Less than one percent in the U.K. If you're a woman of color, you're not even a statistic on this stuff. It's so bad. So I would much rather live in a world that is designed by all of us mm-hmm. for all of us. Mm-hmm. And I believe that because uh, we haven't really been part of designing this world, like we have a unique competitive advantage right now. We see things a little bit differently. We tend to really pay attention to the whole as opposed to uh, more sort of uh, like focused uh, niche. I wouldn't say niche, but there's there's a holistic perspective that women have that have been proven through all kinds of interesting data. And so that thinking of the whole is what we need right now because um, the solutions that we need for the state of the planet are all interconnected. Mm-hmm. And so you have to think about the whole. You can't just go, oh, I'm going to do this. Oops. You know, like the whole classic example of mosquito nets uh, cause more problems because the mosquito nets had this um, – insecticide on them and uh when they went to africa they ended up using them for fishing and then they killed all the fish because it was an unintended consequence of like the whole thing and so like really understanding people's behavior and all the psychology behind why we do things has to be part of not just finding yet another bright shiny object Mm -hmm. so i think invest first of all investing in women because we should because their ideas are amazing too Mm -hmm. and we need to live in a world designed by all and secondly hello women pay their debts (laughs) <laughs> women yeah. are highly capital efficient and our ideas are quite practical and don't really fail as much. Mm. Uh, it's amazing. We have almost hundred percent payback rate on our loans, wow. which is awesome um, compared to the norm. And I, uh, you know, this idea of throwing a whole bunch of money, like who's going to win Uber or Lyft, right. how many yeah. billions of dollars have gone to win the market where everybody loses if that business scales, everybody, the all drivers, right. all of us, yeah, local yeah. transportation. Right. So, um, I we just really need to start getting back to our relationship based local communities uh, and find ways to create more connective tissue amongst all of us instead of separate us and let the robots win. No, mm-hmm. thanks. Yeah, I think humans are the solution, not the problem. Oh, OK, mm-hmm. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, so you have a the first ever world global summit global in Toronto, summit? March 9th and 10th. Check out our website, sheeo.world, okay. S-H-E-E-O dot world. This if you'd like to learn come more. Out, like, just before. So. Just before? Oh, great. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Great. So summit's happening. You'll be able to see stuff online around that. You can become an activator or apply as a venture through our website. And uh, if you're in a country that we're not in, you can still activate in one of those countries to get the experience before bringing it to yours. Uh, and you can fill out the form on our website to bring it to your region if you'd like to, to be involved. And following you, well, following uh, yes. Shio World on um, everything. On Social. everything. It, yeah. it is she, S-H-E-E-O, she- O 
world dot world, dot world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also on social yeah. underscore, is, yeah. underscore. In- yeah insta twitter linkedin and i'm vicky s on twitter uh, or on linkedin happy to be connected with anyone who wants to connect amazing thank you so much for thank being you here so much thank you and uh now that you're all inspired go out and uh um, <laughs> become an activator yeah become an activator <laughs> yeah. thank you so much thank, thank you, you. Thank you very much, Vicky, for being on the show and everybody for listening. That was an amazing conversation. I was uh, blown away by the work they do and just the whole concept of CEO makes you feel good about the world a little bit. And I've always wondered, and I'm glad I finally got the, the chance to ask about like how me as a man, how can I participate in this? And it's a very, I found a very interesting and a very sort of innovative way for men to collaborate and to support women in this space. So uh, thank you again, Vicky, for stopping by the show. Um, if you enjoy this show please give it a review on apple podcast if you're not subscribed yet please subscribe on the podcast player of choice thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time